Hey, I'm Caleb with Means Wood Shop, and today we're going to step away from the table saw and we're going to do something a little different and we are going to make this hat. I asked in a post here on my channel and in a short if y'all wanted a hat make a video and uh, most of y'all said yes. So this is a western weight rabbit felt hat body. Western weight, I guess that means it's just tough. But uh, this is the first hat I made. I made this hat on my prototype hat block. This is just some green hard plant foam that I coated in Bondo which switched to a blue formula instead of a red. It worked pretty good. This hat is a little bit tight on me. It fits and it's uh, it's snug but it's not uncomfortably tight but that's what causes my brim to kind of flip out here. So I made myself a new block out of wood and I haven't used it yet so this hat will be the first hat made on this block, we need to steam it and get it kind of malleable so it'll want to stretch over this block and it's very stiff. So I don't really have a good way of having a lot of steam aside from this steam mop, which is what I've been using. And uh, it actually works pretty good. It gives me a lot of steam. So I don't know if you've seen uh, the YouTube channel with Kirk Brockman. He helped me immensely in learning how to make this first hat. And he describes uh, steaming it until the felt kind of comes alive. I don't know that I have that touch yet, but I kind of have an idea of what he's talking about. So this hat I'm making for Adam. My longtime viewers of the channel will know Adam. might distort your brim stretching it over the block you'll iron that out later and get it nice and flat and cut to its, its final dimension so that's going to give us a nice break between crown and brim and actually what I want to do is I want to measure the height of my crown from the brim because there's a specific height I'm going for Right now I'm at about five inches tall. I'm only about five and a quarter. Right, now that our hat is at that five and a half inch crown height, that's an open crown, from what I've learned, a minimum of 24 hours to the ma a maximum of a week. Do not have the patience to wait for a week, but I think I could wait a day. So we'll let it sit on the block. We'll get let the felt get nice and comfortable being in this shape. All right, so right now you may notice that this brim looks pretty crazy. It's very warped. I'm going to start ironing the brim flat. I don't know if it's traditional with hat making, but I have a very nice flat piece of wood. And after I iron a piece of the brim, I will take the wood and just kind of help set it into that shape. See all these ridges and folds, as you iron it, will want to push and push around and they'll keep relocating, so to speak, and you just kind of have to keep at it for a while.
I think I'm satisfied with this for now. I may do a little bit more later, but I will also be shaping the brim too after we get it cut. So I'm not like too worried if it's like slightly wavy. All right, another thing we could work on while the hat is on the block is our sweatband. But I'm not too happy with it because the sweatbands I'm used to are like two inch sweatbands and this is like two and a half or something. So I'm gonna cut about half an inch off of this and since it's this curved shape, I'm not gonna use a straight edge. I'm, honestly, I'm just gonna eyeball it. <laughs> much more of a thickness I like better. So I'm not sure how well you could see, but when I stitch the sweatband together, I do not overlap it. I butt the ends up together, and then I do like a zigzag stitch across it. I know there are hat makers that have like specialty made tools for doing this. I do not. to finish the band. Um, one thing I really wish I could show y'all was making the hat liner. This is the liner for my hat. And I had already made the liner for the hat that we're working on before I checked and gauged the interest in watching a hat making video. It's easy though. It's just a circle and then like a big semi-circle and you stitch them together. And, uh, we'll probably be making another hat at some point, but I was requested a different color instead of the royal blue. Uh, when we make that hat, I could show you doing the liner. I have waited a little over a 24 hour period. I can't do the whole wait for a week thing. I'm way too impatient for that. But uh, I think the only thing I did that I forgot to film was trimming the brim down to size. I used some Taylor's chalk, very sharp pair of scissors. So that's not ideal. That's probably not the best way to do it or the ideal way to do it. There's a tool used for cutting the brim and it's called a rounding jack and it is like I have yet to find one that's like under $300 and I'm not doing that. I could probably figure out a way to make one but I don't feel like doing it right now. So I've already loosened my cord on this. Oh yeah. Okay so we could take this inside and I'll show you what we need to do next. All right, so now that the hat is off the block, the next thing we'll be doing is stitching in our sweatband. And uh, it's not as bad as you'd think. I was dreading the task on my first hat, but it's actually not that bad. So on your sweatband, you'll have your leather band and then there's this stuff on the outside which you can flip out. I think that's called reading tape. It's got a little plastic wire inside of it. Or you could see where stitches go through the leather and into the reading tape. When I'm stitching this to the hat, I will be going through the little stitch holes on the reading tape, not through the leather. I'm using these pins to help hold everything into place as I'm going to run this my needle through the back side so the knot on the back of the thread is concealed. And it's actually pretty easy to go through that reading tape. I say as I can't get my needle through here. And when I'm going in and out, I'm looking for those holes that are already in the tape made from when it was stitched to the leather band. I have seen hat makers who have like a specialty sewing machine 
just for this task. I wish I did. So I'm just gonna keep working my way around the hat until we're done. Okay, we're starting on our ribbon and I'm just wrapping it around. If I remember, this was a step I didn't enjoy a whole lot on my first hat. But we don't need the full length of the hat because we're gonna make a bow that's gonna cover this up and really extra ribbon will just get in the way, so. Done this on this end where I made it into a nice little point. And I'm gonna do it on this end. I got a towel on my table. It shouldn't be ironing on my table, but I am am. I'm get those triangles down. Get them pressed real good. I have a clip here to indicate the front of the hat, just so I could get my placement correct. I'm going to do this for this other side and then we can make the uh, bow for it. What you're looking at here is going to be the hat bow and it's three separate pieces so this will be the main part of the bow that we will fold. This part will just fold and go behind it and stick up a little bit as sort of an accent. And then this piece will be folded in half and it will wrap around and kind of cinch it. It's really important too that if you have children, you raid their Capri Sun before you do this in case you get thirsty. Pin it. I'm not worrying about these extra parts yet because I'm just gonna tack this end in. I like trying to get it as close to the corners of the bow as possible. I just remember poking myself a lot with the needle the last time I did this. Alright, with that side of the bow tacked on, putting this middle segment piece on. You know. Our bow is complete. So now the only step we gotta do is put the liner inside. A finished hat does not need a liner, but uh, it'll help to finish a hat. Now, something I learned from <clears throat> the company at Vintage is they do not stitch in their hat liners. So I elected to take a page out of their book and not stitch in my hat liners. So the reason for that is if the hat ever collapses in on itself or just gets messed up or too beat up or wore out and you need to re-block it, it'll be really easy to just pop this liner out, re-block the hat, and then pop it back in. Uh, the sweat band is the only thing holding it in there. That's how this hat is, and I've worn this hat a lot since I've made it. I've not had any issues with the liner trying to come out or anything and uh, it looks very nice. Now we're to the fun stuff, which is putting the bash in the hat, and I got that clip once again to remind me where the front is, just so I don't get this misaligned. That thing's getting nice and steamy. And I did spritz it with the water bottle a little bit when I put it on the block, but I'm not doing that for shaping. gonna put a deep center crease on this one but I also want a teardrop shape
All right, I will keep uh, finessing the shape, catch back up with you when it's completely done. Here's the finished hat. I'm really happy with the shape we got. Uh, I experimented a lot with it, tried to give it a western vibe, and while this hat is going for Adam, you know I gotta try it on because we're the same size. Ooh, I can see myself in there. That's pretty sharp. I think I might have to make myself one in the in this style. Maybe a different color though. I do like my indie hats, but that's pretty sharp. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching making this hat. If you liked it, then subscribe, and I'm probably going to do some more hat stuff coming up. So if you want to see more of that, stay tuned.